Here's the deep problem of free will. On the one hand, our human sense is that our actions are fully free. On the other hand, our scientific sense is that every action is determined by a prior action. What is free will? Do we have free will? That's the big question. Free will is such a big question that the John Templeton Foundation has funded a multi-year study with experts in science, philosophy, and theology. The project is called Big Questions in Free Will. It has 60 participants, four conferences, numerous experiments and papers, all to research, test, discuss, and debate free will. I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn, and Closer to Truth follows the project, asking the big questions in free will. Christoph, your experiment involves uh, real-time work with patients who have electrodes implanted for uh, uh, medical reasons. Uh, what is the basic science, the basic neurobiology behind the experiment? Our experiment are basic variant of a famous experiment by Benjamin Libet. We're trying to understand the neuronal mechanism that underlie a voluntary decision that traditionally people would say involves free will. Mm -hmm. And we know from, from previous experiments, there are several components to this. One component relates to this feeling that psychologists now called authorship or agency. Mm -hmm. I lift my right hand and I have a feeling that I, not you, not my parents, not my friends, were responsible for me lifting this hand. We know there's a specific locus in the brain that generates this, the, in this conscious uh, sensation. We'd like to separate that out from the neural mechanism that actually gives rise to what I personally feel is this voluntary action. What are the actual mechanisms? Where is the, 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 the decision first taken? And what part of the brain are involved in what sequence? So finally, I lift my right hand. And more interesting, from a practical perspective, can I predict this ahead of time? Can I maybe read off your brain signal so I can know one second ahead of time, are you going to move the right hand? Or are you going to move the left hand? The other thing we're interested in is choices that involve deliberations, because that also brings in moral judgment. Should I be doing this? Is this a wise idea? Am I going to hurt somebody, etc.? And so there we, we're devising a slightly different paradigm where we, where we play a simple game where the patient is free to move one or the other hand at some command. We lift both of our hands. However, if you lift the same hand as I do, then you win one dollar. Right. And if we do this, yeah. you see, yeah. then I win a dollar. And once again, this is much closer to the real decision that we care about because it has consequences and you deliberate rather than just, ah, it doesn't matter, I pick this or this. They're, they're exactly identical. I can't take out both, so I have to uh, take one. Now the Christoph sends me to Cedar sinai Medical Center in West Los Angeles. I'll have a ringside seat watching the brain make real-world decisions. A patient has graciously allowed me to observe as she undergoes brain surgery for epilepsy, and then afterwards as she participates in experiments of decision-making and free will. I meet the neurosurgeon, Dr. Adam Mamalek. We do an operation, a craniotomy, where we open the skull and put a sheet of electrodes on the surface of the brain. It covers the area that we think is involved, plus the periphery around it. Dr. Mamalek introduces his patient, Audrey. Uh, no, that's Hi. Right. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Every week of her life, since she was a baby, Audrey has endured multiple epileptic seizures. Now she can be cured. We'll be able to record your seizures, but we'll also be able to map the different areas of brain function. Okay. And we can also do other tests mm -hmm. to really try to understand not specifically how your brain works, but how the brain works in general. Okay. And uh, one of the questions that we're very interested in studying is, how do you make conscious decisions? It's a remarkable procedure. By charting Audrey's brain waves, neurosurgeons create a fine-grained map of her brain, enabling them to locate and remove the lesion that causes her seizures. At the same time, neuroscientists can examine brain activity during decision-making, seeking brain-based facts about free will.
A week later at Caltech, Christoph's partner, neuroscientist Uri Maus, shows me the results. Basically, the patient and I are playing a simple version of the rock, scissors, paper <laughs> that, that children play. If I raise the mirror image of what you raise, then let's say I win. Okay. And if we raise the same hand, so if you raise uh, your right hand and I raise the right hand, then, then, then okay. you win. We start with $5, and every time she wins, I give her 10 cents, so I lose 10 cents and she gains 10 cents. And if she loses, it's the other way around. And if she doesn't react quickly enough, because the idea, of course, you can always just wait to see what yeah, the other right, guy's right, doing and cheating, move, yeah. we just uh, deduct 10 cents. So it's, it becomes competitive. Oh, oh, okay. We play for about 50 rounds. What we're interested in is finding the difference between preparatory activity towards uh, moving the left hand versus moving the right hand, to be able to predict which hand you will raise before the go signal telling you to raise your hand is even there. So we have this grid here, yeah. which is much closer to the source of the signal than you would have if it was EEG and it's sitting here and right, there's the, 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 the tissue and the skull and everything, the, the attenuation of the signal and you don't know where it's coming from. So here we're, we're much closer to the signal. So this grid is in her head here. And from this grid, we see these wires coming out. From here, it goes into uh, these panels here. And from there, there's a wire that goes to a system that records and does some analysis. And from that system, through another wire that you kind of maybe see here, goes into this machine, and I get a beep either on the right ear or on the left ear, which tells me to raise my right hand or my left hand in order to beat the patient. And this is half a second before the go signal. So I know what I need to move, and I just wait half a second for the go signal and move it. OK, let's, uh, let's, let's see what really happened. OK. This is counting down five, four, three, two, one, and then go, 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 and we raise our hand. So if I win, my side of the response box lights up in blue, and if she wins, her side of the response box lights in red. Five, four, three, two, one, go, and this time I win. And then we try it again, and so this goes on like that for about 50 trials. There's a screen behind Audrey, she can't see it, and the screen shows an arrow which hand she's going to raise according to the real-time system. So she's about to raise her right hand, and so it was... It was just the, yeah. it's just the, the arrow comes on like just a fraction of a second before, before she moves. Right, and before the go signal. Right. So this time she did ra raise the hand that the, the, the arrow was pointing at, and again it was correct, she raised the hand the arrow was pointing at. So we were able to beat her, and we, we played three times. We, I was able to win with a relatively large margin two of those three times. She was competitive about it. It had meaning. Yeah, that's, that's that was the important thing for us. Okay, so what are the implications for free will here? Well, if I can predict what you're doing when, you're, when your uh, um, decision is, is making a difference, it, it might be stronger evidence that uh, these unconscious processes are, are affecting also these types of decisions that are more important for moral responsibility. And the implications of what you're saying, though, is that if you are able to predict this to the degree of accuracy that, that you can, our brain is making our decisions and we're not. It does give us some philosophical pause about what free will is. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment below. You can support Closer to Truth by subscribing.